Minister Josephine Teo. Oh, sorry, SPS Shin Shelling. Mr. Deputy Speaker, I thank the members for speaking in support of the bill. While members recognise the importance of enforcement measures to deter irresponsible driving, many also highlighted the need to go beyond enforcement and take a wider approach to ensuring road safety to make use of other levers such as education and engagement. Mr. Deputy Speaker, we fully agree with these views. I will respond to questions on our regulatory regime as well as our general approach to road safety. Second Minister for Home Affairs, Mrs. Josephine Teo, will then address questions on criminal offences and touch on emerging road traffic issues. First, on our amendments to tighten the regulatory regime against irresponsible driving. On the streamlined license suspension and revocation process, Ms. Rahayu Mazam asked whether the Deputy Commissioner of Police or DCP may have the discretion to extend the notice period before suspension and revocation. The DCP can extend the notice period for suspension but only for the suspended motorists to attend the DIPS retraining course. This is because, in this case, the motorist is taking steps to address his errant behaviour. Thus, where a licensee has indicated to the traffic police that he intends to take the DIPS retraining course and the course date is later than the date when the suspension is supposed to take effect, he will have the effective date of the suspension pushed back. This is so that the licensee may complete the course and have the suspension period reduced. It bears remembering that for a motorist to be facing suspension and revocation, he would have committed several offences before, and he would have had opportunities previously to appeal against those offences. We have to ensure that our processes are implemented fairly and consistently, a point that the Honourable Member, Madam Rahayu, also mentioned in her speech. There were also questions on obligations for motorists in accidents involving animals. We will have to balance between animal welfare and the safety of road users. That is why the bill obligates the motorist to stop only when it is safe to do so. We do not want to be too prescriptive in the law by stating when it is safe or unsafe as it is not possible to cover all situations and accurately describe when it is safe or unsafe. Similarly, it is not possible to be exhaustive in listing out all the types of animals that motorists should stop for in accidents involving animals. The police will take a practical approach and the courts will decide depending on the facts of the case. Mr Deputy Speaker, I will now like to speak on our wider approach towards road safety. Members spoke on the progress of existing road safety measures and made new suggestions to improve road safety. I will address these issues in turn. First, on existing road safety measures. Members spoke on the need to calibrate our approach to different road user groups. We fully agree. Allow me to explain how we have done so. Mr Christopher de Souza asked about the measures that have been taken to target at-risk road user groups. Mr Melvin Yong also pointed out the need to educate and, ed and engage with motorcyclists as an at-risk group. We agree. In recent years, the TP has identified vulnerable road user groups such as elderly pedestrians and motorcyclists and taken an increasingly calibrated approach to working with these different road user groups. For example, the TP regularly engages these groups through targeted regular road safety dialogues as well as outreach events such as the annual Singapore Ride Safe. The TP also developed the Road Master Test Kit to help elderly road users assess their eyesight, hearing and reaction times and to share safe road use habits with them. Madam Rahayu Mazam spoke about the need to engage and shape the behaviours of vocational drivers. We agree and the TP works closely with agencies such as MOM, MOT and LTA to introduce measures for vocational drivers. For example, the TP works with the Workplace Safety and Health Council to remind heavy vehicle drivers and their employers regularly on the importance of adopting safe driving practices. 
Under the Workplace Safety and Health Council's Drive Safe, Work Safe campaign, more than 200 heavy vehicle fleet owners have pledged to implement measures to encourage safe driving by their employees. The TP also engages taxi and private car, private hire car, car drivers, their companies, as well as the National Taxi Association and National Private Hire Vehicles Association on safe driving practices. To remind taxi drivers to stay alert and drive safely when they approach high-risk areas, the TP worked with taxi companies to incorporate the locations of high-risk areas in the mobile data terminals of taxis. Members also spoke about the need to continually update our measures. The TP and LTH have stepped up enforcement, education and engagement to improve road safety. We conduct periodic, interview, uh, we conduct periodic reviews to ensure our measures are effective. Mr. Ang Hin Kee asked to conduct periodic reviews of driving course content and to increase engagement initiatives to raise awareness among different road user groups. We agree. The TP regularly updates the driving course curriculum. It is through these reviews that we have decided to introduce simulator training for all new learner motorists towards the end of the year. This is to allow them to practice safe driving habits in a controlled environment. On engagement, we agree that this is important and the MHA and TP are working on extending our outreach to as many road users as possible. Dr. Chia Shilu spoke about the need to cater to an aging motorist population. He suggested to make adjustments to our regimes, to our regime, such as customized training and health assessments. We agree. At present, we already have calibrated health checks for motorists. Motorists above the age of 65 are required to undergo and pass a medical examination every three years. Heavy vehicle drivers have added responsibilities and are required to do so every year. We will study Dr. Chia's suggestion. Second, members recognize the need to explore new solutions and have raised new, su new suggestions to improve road safety. Dr. Walter Tassera suggested to scale road traffic fines according to income to improve deterrence and allow equity in the administration of justice. We note that some other jurisdictions, such as Finland, have implemented such an income-based system. Other jurisdictions, such as the United Kingdom, have piloted trials that were unfortunately eventually discontinued. The MHA will study the suitability and impact of implementing a similar system. Ms. Joan Pereira suggested for the TP to be involved in the earlier stages of infrastructural road planning. Indeed, this is being done. The TP works with HDB and LTA in the early stages of planning for new estates. The TP assesses the likely traffic and pedestrian flow in the new HDB estates and provides advice on the specific locations where enforcement cameras ought to be installed. One recent example is Bidadari New Town, where the TP assessed and decided to install two red light cameras. Likewise, TP provides inputs where required to LTA's road safety infrastructure plans. Most recently, TP worked with LTA to reduce the speed limits at two silver zones from 40 km per hour to 30 km per hour. Members also made various other suggestions, such as Mr. Ang Hin Kee's suggestion to issue rebates to car dealers who install safety enabling technologies in their vehicles and provide training for vocational drivers. Dr. Chia Shilu, Professor Lim San San, Mr. Melvin Yong and Mr. Murali Pillay suggested to leverage on new technologies such as <coughs> urban analytics, ignition interlock devices and speed limiters. Mr. Christopher de Souza suggested providing support for victims of drink driving accidents. Professor Lim San San and Ms. Joan Pereira also suggested to expedite the installation of red amber green arrows at all right turning junctions. Dr. Chia Shilu suggested to restrict offenders' access to vehicles. Mr. Melvin Yong suggested for LTA to consider the installation of countdown timers and to disallow cyclists from bus lanes. Mr. Murali Pillay suggested for MOT to tighten the framework such that owners are held responsible for death and injuries arising from their neglect to maintain 
their vehicles. Mr. Deputy Speaker, I thank the members for their suggestions. We agree with the members that a wider approach to ensuring road safety is important. MHA will consider these suggestions with the relevant agencies for future reviews. Thank you.